talking about this has shifted my days where my clothes are in the hamper, my bed is made, and I've scheduled my life where I feel like I'm accomplishing things that I've chosen for myself. Hi, welcome to the channel. My name is Daniel. I make content about trauma recovery, self-help, and any kind of hobbies that I enjoy. And I just like making videos. Today I wanted to talk about shame and guilt and how it affects us when we try to discuss trauma and try to talk about trauma. For the past two weeks, I have felt a lot of shame and a lot of guilt for making trauma-related videos. I was scared of what other people were perceiving me as, what other people were thinking of me. And I want to paint a picture of what it looks like when you share this versus when you don't. When I was holding this in, when it was literally just me and my therapist that knew about this, I was ordering food every night, eating myself sick. I'd go to bed at 3.30, 4 in the morning because the thoughts of what happened to me were haunting me, preventing me from falling asleep. I'd wake up at 12.30 in a haze, hoping I could just get 30 minutes of guitar practice in before going into a hole of YouTube TV and inevitably ordering food and starting the cycle all over again. As the amount of trauma incidents increases within a person, their likelihood for suicide, drug abuse, and addiction increases exponentially. And holding it in is only protecting that person. Holding it in is only doing damage to myself. My abuser would tell me like, it's just you and me, it's just you and me. And I believe that. I understand now why I was hiding this because I felt shame that I shouldn't have. I felt guilt that I shouldn't have. We make the people that were assaulted feel shame for having to share this. The impetus doesn't lie on those people. The impetus lies on the abusers. They are the ones that should be ashamed. They are the ones that should feel this guilt, not the friends we entrust or the people who have suffered through this. And the only way we can shift that is by talking about it. Although it can be overwhelming, it has given me so much. The weight, the shame, the grief, the guilt, all these burdensome emotions have diminished significantly since I started talking about this. The hope in this is people surprised me. My uncle was working for my abuser and when I told him, he quit his job. He gave up his livelihood because he didn't want to feel like a hypocrite for working for an abuser. It just felt very supported rather than just white knuckling it through being dictated by like, oh, there's that feeling again. Okay, um, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just drink whiskey and then hopefully it'll get late enough where I'm so tired I can just go to bed. Talking about this has shifted my days where my clothes are in the hamper, my bed is made, and I've scheduled my life where I feel like I'm accomplishing things that I've chosen for myself. Before, it felt like 100% of my day was awful. And the major shift was, okay, 51% of my day is good and 49% is filled with bad thoughts. Now I'm at a point where it's like 95% of my day is good. And I'm just putting my energy towards things I care about and people I care about. And that's what talking about this has given me. And I hope maybe my story helps you. If you would like a video on disclosure, if you would like a video on how I managed to tell the first people, I'd, I'd gladly make it. Thank you for making it to the end of the video. I know this is a tough topic, but I believe in you, you can do it. You're not alone in this. And um, if you like this content, uh, please consider subscribing. I try to make a video every Sunday and then moving forward in the future, hopefully two videos a week. So um, thanks for your time. I hope this helps. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, if you want to do it privately, just message me on Instagram at daniel.chira. Happy to offer my two cents. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you next Sunday.